Section 8 housing for low-income individuals could be changing in a big, big way. And yes, in a good, big way. Let's get into it and discuss all the details. But really quickly, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button right down below the video as it's totally free to do so and I'm back for you each and every day to bring you all of the latest updates as well as help you out with all of this very important information with all of these multi trillion dollar stimulus packages on the table and that are working through Congress right now. There's a lot of things that are changing very rapidly during this time. I do all the research so that you don't have to. I come back in these short videos, boil it all down and deliver them to you to help you out in any way that I can. So again, thank you so much for your support. I truly appreciate it. Subscribe down below and let's get into it and talk about some of these big changes that could be coming to Section 8 housing in a good, good way. All right. So, you've probably heard about these multi-trillion dollar packages. In fact, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time now, of course you've heard about them because we talk about it every single day, right? So, within these multi-trillion dollar packages, have you ever heard about the Section 8 provision in there? Well, I'm guessing probably not. The reason why is this is not one of the main headliners in the package. Now, what do I mean by that? Really quickly, so, within this main reconciliation bill right now, there's a bunch of headliner topics. In other words, like expansion of the child tax credit, Medicare, free college tuition, paid family leave, all of these items, right? These are the headliners, or what I call the headliners anyway. But within the text of the bill, have you heard about the provision for Section 8? Like I said, this is not one that typically makes the headlines, but it is in there and it could impact millions of lives. So let's talk through the details of what this package actually contains for Section 8. Now, within this reconciliation bill, by the way, this is the bigger of the two packages. There's two on the table right now. There's one for $1.2 trillion, which is focused on infrastructure. This is enclosed in the second one, the bigger one that is multi-trillion. It could be two trillion, it could be three, it could be 3.5. 3 We're still working on the details right now. However, within this bill, there is $327 billion allocated for housing, which also includes $90 billion for rental assistance. So yeah, that is in the package right here, right now on the table. All of this is in there. In fact, within this $327 billion, that would establish and assist 1 million new households. Pretty amazing, right? Here's another statistic for you. At any given time, there's about 600,000 homeless people in this country right now. So if we run all the numbers, if this $327 billion is enough to establish and assist 1 million new households, Therefore, it would make sense that there probably shouldn't be any homeless people anymore in this country, according to the numbers anyway, right? And then we would still have a surplus of 400,000 homes available. Does all that make sense? 1 million homes newly established that this would assist for and 600,000 homeless people. Can I run the numbers here? That gives us a surplus of 400,000 uh, homes that we could still have for other people to take advantage of and probably finally get the assistance with Section 8 that many people have probably been waiting in line for possibly for many years in some instances. So according to the more information and the reports that I've been finding on this $327 billion and Section 8 all across the country right now and homeless and everything that I've been uh, researching on all of this, let me give you some more numbers on this. Now, if you know anything about Section 8, if you've applied for it, if you've looked up, uh, if you looked into it, if you've done any research on Section 8, you'll probably find very quickly that there is a surplus of people as applying for Section 8, whereas housing is very limited. In some instances, in fact, over in California, there are many, many people that are on the waiting list right now waiting for Section 8, and in a lot of instances, it takes many years to get housing through Section 8, right? In in many loca uh, locations all around the country, that is unfortunately the situation. In fact, the national average just across the board, there are one housing units, like one house available, like one apartment, one house, whatever it happens to be, one housing unit available for every five applicants. 
Wow, can you see the difference here? So within this um, $327 billion, there'd be that money in there for housing. However, the problem may, uh, could be is that there's a shortage of housing. So therefore, hopefully they would take some of this $327 billion and allocate it toward low income or Section 8 housing, right? And then also helping out all of those individuals who qualify for it to get into those homes quickly, right? So this is actually something that President Biden actually campaigned on way back back when he was campaigning, you know, whatever, a year ago, year and a half ago, whatever. Um, this is a promise that he talked about, whereas they would uh, restore the Section 8 program and basically give all of these people who have been waiting in lines for years getting into Section 8, basically putting all this money into the, the system and basically getting all these people into a home right away. Well, here we are approaching the end of 2021 already, and we haven't really seen a whole lot of actually into this yet. However, within this next stimulus package, there is the $327 billion allocated to get all of this done. Well, if this package actually does get passed, and hopefully it does get passed sometime soon, Hopefully they'll take that 327 billion and they'll allocate it immediately and get this stuff in order because here's the thing. This is real people that we're talking about, real lives that we're talking about, homeless people and or people that have been waiting on the list for many, many years in a lot of instances waiting to be placed into Section 8 housing and or waiting for rental assistance. So this would be an amazing, amazing thing for literally hundreds of thousands of people. In many instances, probably a million or two people, realistically, because a lot of those people who have been waiting could finally get into the homes that they've been waiting for. So, wow, I mean, seriously, this is one really cool thing out of this stimulus package. Now, again, we all want cash infusions, right? Let's just be real. We want some cash in our pockets in the form of stimulus checks. We want some other cash as in universal basic income, gu guaranteed basic income, monthly checks, you name it, whatever we wanna call it. We want cash in our pockets. But at the end of the day, right, we still do need um, shelter, right? The kind of the, one of the necessities. We do need some kind of place to live in. And it certainly would be nice to get everybody a home who has been waiting for so, so long. So this is one of those other provisions within the package. I've kind of been digging around in it a little bit lately, just kind of seeing what's out there. It's a big package. There's a lot of stuff out there. And realistically, we still don't really have a whole total... Uh, clue as in what's every what's every uh all the provisions and everything in this package right now there's still a lot of stuff out there it's like i don't even know what's out there i mean seriously with all in all the text there are thousands of pages within this bill so it's going to take a long time to get through everything like i said i've been digging around in it over the last few days here kind of seeing hey uh, what else can i dig up in this thing and of course <laughs> came up with this uh, this section eight thing right here so this is one really cool thing and i know that a lot of people here in the community i've seen comments down below saying hey I applied for Section 8 two years ago and I'm still waiting. Or some people, you know, down here in the comments section, I've seen your frustrations laid out talking about Section 8 and basically like, hey, this program, it's it's good, but yet it takes forever to get into it, right? So uh, usually the application process and uh, the acceptance process getting into something is a very long time. So anyway, hopefully this would shore up all of that right now, help out all of those individuals who really need that home to get into. I mean, I don't know. If they get this done, it could be a really cool thing for a lot of people, hundreds of thousands, possibly even a couple million people. So the big thing that we need to watch right now is the stimulus package. And of course, if you've been watching my videos for a while now, you know that we've been talking about how some of the provisions are possibly on the chopping block or possibly even the shaving block, right? <laughs> There's a couple different blocks here we have, but here's the thing. We do know that they want to shave down the package size, as in, as of right now, it's about $3.5 trillion, but they want to bring it down closer to maybe 2, 2.2, 2.5, maybe 1.9, something like that, around the $2 trillion range. Well, in order to get that achieved, they do need to remove some of the provisions within the package. So that makes a few of the items within the package vulnerable for potential chopping or shaving, right? So shaving, in other words, just taking the the total um, number of dollars allocated for that provision down a little bit. And if they chop it, that just means, well, unfortunately, it's going to be removed, right? So we don't know what's actually going to be chopped yet or shaved, but we have to say pretty much anything within the package right now is vulnerable. Therefore, we won't know until Congress actually comes together and negotiates out all the details and figures out, okay, what can stay and what can go, right? So either way, I'll continue watching it very closely. No need to do the research because I do it for 
for you. I boil it all down into these short videos and I deliver them to you a few times each and every day so that you can stay tuned with everything going on as things are changing very rapidly during this time. So again, I hope this helps you out. For those of you who have been waiting for housing or have applied for Section 8 and you know the frustrating process, you're on the waiting list or any of these other situations, hey, maybe this will be a nice windfall for a lot of people helping you out in another way, right? So good stuff right here. I'll continue watching everything closely. I'll bring all the details to you as we get more updates, but you got to make sure to stay tuned. So subscribe down below. It's totally free and go back and check out any of the other nearly 1,700 videos right here on the channel. Thanks again. I truly appreciate it. Enjoy your day and feel free to share the videos with your friends, family, and social media. So have a good day.